Please give a very, very warm welcome, Jack and Adele Foley. People usually think of poets, you know, a single person, a poet, there it is, and we've been seeing that today um, almost entirely. Maybe Steve Arnson doesn't quite fit, <laughs> I don't know. But it occurred to me that a poet could be a couple of people, and you're going to see the uh, result of that thought in a minute or two, but Adele's going to begin as one person with some haiku. Some haiku. Um, um, this is something I actually wrote a bit ago, but I updated the first part of it because of current events. It's about Syria. It's called Syrian Journal. I am afraid for our friends in Syria in these days of turmoil. The incessant horns don't clear traffic jams on the streets of Damascus. Step off the high curb, follow a native between the cars to safety. The traffic police at major intersections smile and say, welcome. Vendors invite us to buy their tapes or trinkets spread out on bracelets down three flights of stairs, on the near side of the bridge, a mini book sook. It's like Mexico. Don't drink water. Eat only if cooked, canned, or peeled. They walk arm in arm. One wears a headscarf on their way to class. National Museum. Museum artifacts strewn about the garden or propped against the wall. With Lonely Planet, you find the old synagogue, murals on the walls. Now there are no Jews in Damascus. They left when the borders opened. High up on the hill, the blue walls of Malula, the path through the caves. In the castle, Clac de Chevalier, a real crusader castle ruins of huge stones. We sit in windows of a chapel, picture knights at the round table, listen to stories of metal gates, boiling oil, catapults, boulders. But the castle fell to the Malamuts who sent the crusaders home. Palmyra, light pink Roman stones, well preserved in the desert near dates and palm trees. The amphitheater decked out for a Spanish prince. Jack does a time step. Hama, giant water wheels turning slowly overhead in the setting sun. In the atelier, the artist offers coffee and a cigarette. Aleppo, the citadel floats above our heads bathed in light against the night sky. And finally, um, the poem that gave my book its title, Learning to Shave for Our Son, Sean. A nick on the jaw, the razor's edge of manhood along the bloodline. Thank you. Thank you, dear. I warned you about a couple of voices, um, person having a couple of those. Um, oh, I want to say, Dominus Vobiscum. I wanted to get something in for the New Testament, after all that Hebrew. What was it? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. <laughs> Some altar boys and so on and so forth. <laughs> we knew uh, briefly a story. A friend of mine who was half Jewish, but his mother insisted that he become Catholic. And uh, so he was very, very uneasy about it. His father was Jewish. And he was very, very uneasy about his whole Catholicism. And he was very good. And he became an altar boy. And there he was serving at the altar, when at one point, the priest said, Dominus Vobiscum. 
had a heart attack, fell down and died. I don't know whether my friend had the presence of mind to say, et cum spirito too. <laughs> We're going to do the boy, the girl, and the piece of chocolate. The boy appears with a box of chocolates. The girl, who has been seated, rises to meet him. Hey, we've gone through that chocolate pretty quickly. Yes, there's only one piece left in the box. Well, you can have it if you want. But it's your favorite, a truffle. Yes, but I'd like you to have it. Oh, no, no, that's the last one. It's your favorite. It's yours. But I'm giving it to you. That's a sweet gesture. But I don't need any more chocolates. I've had plenty. Yes, I, uh, I noticed you've been gaining a little weight. What? Yeah, you've got a little problem with those buttons. See? I have a problem? Yes. Oh, only a little one, but a problem. You think I'm gaining weight? Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly, but, uh, yes, you're getting a little hefty. FD, am I? It's all right. I like big women. Nice of you. And you can get even bigger by eating that piece of chocolate. I wouldn't touch that piece of chocolate with a 10-foot pole. One little chocolate won't make much difference. Lots of people have a little sweet after dinner. They never show it at all. Maybe you think I should run around the block a couple of times. Exercise never hurt anyone, you know. Listen, you butterball, you're fat. You've always been fat. You've been fat as long as I've known you. Hey, this isn't about me. What do you mean it isn't about you? It's all about you. That's your chocolate. No, no, I want you to have it. Why? Because I'm nice, that's why. Because I love you. You want me to get fat. I only said you had a little problem. You don't have to get so defensive. I'm not defensive. You're the one who needs defending. Defensive doesn't mean needing defending. Oh, who cares? Well, I sure don't. Why don't we just throw the piece of chocolate away? No, we shouldn't do that. Why? It's chocolate. So? So chocolate is special. Here, take the piece of chocolate. Is there poison in that piece of chocolate? No, no, just chocolate, you know, and butter and sugar. You know, fattening stuff. I'm getting tired of all this talk about how fat I am. Let's talk about something else. Good idea. Well, what should we talk about? How should I know? You're the one with all the answers. We could talk about current events. I hate current events. Look how depressing everything is. The president, the country, everything. It's all awash in hatred and mismanagement. I hate it. I hate it. How about literature? Boring. How about sex? You mean talking about it? I mean doing it. Not now. I'm not in the mood. And besides, I have a headache. You always have a headache. I don't always have a headache. Just like a man. You expect us to be always ready. Well, we're not always ready. We have to be coaxed a little. We have to be persuaded. That's why I was trying to give you the piece of chocolate. You wanted to give me a piece of chocolate, so I'd give you sex? Well, that's putting it a little bluntly, but yes. You were paying me to give you sex? Well, I wouldn't say paying you. I was giving you a piece of chocolate. One lousy piece of chocolate? Do you think that's all I'm worth? It was my favorite kind of chocolate. But it was only one piece. You think I'd fuck you for one piece of chocolate? All right. Next time I'll offer two. I wouldn't fuck you if you offered me a hundred boxes of chocolate. I know it. That's why I offered you only one. I don't have to offer you a lot of chocolate. All I need is one. You'll say no to that. I might as well save the rest of the box for myself. Yourself. That's all you think of. Well, have you got a better subject? Yes, I do. I think about the world. The world? Yes, and my place in it. I thought you hated current events. I do, but that's not the same as the world. That just shows the limitation of your thinking. You've never been particularly deep. Why did you marry me then? I thought you'd get better. Better? You thought I was a fixer-upper? You could put it like that, yes. Well, did I? Did you what? Did I get better? No, you just got fatter. 
You started eating those chocolates, and you never stopped, and you just got immense. I'm not all that fat. Oh, yes, you are. And you are also a living disproof of the old adage that fat people are jolly. You are dull, dull, dull. She reaches for the chocolate. Dull, am I? Give me that piece of chocolate. No, you said it was mine. But you don't need it. You're getting fat. You're fatter than I am. I tell you what. Let's give the chocolate to charity. We'll go outside and hand it with our compliments to the first kid we see. He won't take it. Kids aren't supposed to take candy from strangers. We'll introduce ourselves. We're still strangers. <laughs> Besides, if he took it, it would be setting a bad precedent. Someone might want to give him poison candy. Uh, maybe I'm trying to give you poison candy. You haven't the imagination. Oh, I haven't, eh? I tell you, I've been reading a lot of books lately. Uh, that is, I'm sure, a recent development. And they have a lot of ideas about handling people like you. What books? Well, Mein Kampf by Hitler. You've been reading Mein Kampf? Yes, and he has a few ideas I'd like to try out. You know, Western women have too much freedom. Nietzsche said, truth is a woman. That's why she loves a soldier. Nietzsche ended up in the nuthouse, which, I might add, is where you will end up, too. Listen, I'm serious. You couldn't be serious if you grew two heads. And you are, huh? I have my serious side. Yes, that doesn't mean I'm against fun. And what do you think of as fun? Eating chocolates. She gulps the chocolate down. You ate the chocolate. I did. It was the last piece. It was. I thought you'd give the chocolate to me. You offered it to me. I ate it. I thought if I mentioned you were putting on weight, you'd hand it back to me. And then I could eat it. You offered it to me, hoping I'd give it back to you. Well, yes. That sometimes happens. Not in this case. Yum, yum. It was delicious. That was the last chocolate. The last. I'll never buy you another box of chocolates. You didn't. I bought this box. It's my box. Well, you can have it. I did. Bitch. Bastard. What's on television? Nothing but reruns. Want to go out? No. Hey, honey. Let's make up. Why? I have another box of chocolates. Where? I hid it in the closet. That's terrible. Let's go eat them all. Let's get fat. First, can I read you my poem? All right. What is it? It's called The Skeleton's Defense of Carnality. Truly, I have lost weight. I have lost weight. Grown lean in love's defense. In love's defense, grown grave. It was concupiscence that brought me to the state. All bone and a bit of skin to keep the bone within. Flesh is no heavy burden for one possessed of little and accustomed to its loss. I lean to love, which leaves me lean till lean turn into lack. A wanton bone, I sing my song and travel where the bone is blown and extricate true love from lust as any man of wisdom must. Then wherefore should I rage against this pilgrimage from gravel unto gravel? Circuitous I travel from love to lack and lack to lack from lean to lack, and back. What a strange poem. I have a poem, too. Who do we fall in love with if not ourselves? Starstruck, stupid, or what we feel when struck by Cupid. Falling in love is what we have instead of God. The powerful need for self-abasement leads to our own effacement. To thy high requiem become a sod, wrote Keats, who understood these things too well. And Anne Francis in this film, fearful and beautiful, is a statue, a woman turned to wood. I think of Chet Baker with his thin voice 
and marvelous horn, the sudden presence of heroin. Heroin. H-E-R-O-I-N-E. -E. That's our play. Thank mm -hmm. you.